little echoey because I'm using the uh, computer microphone. I don't know what's going on with this headset. Okay, so again, welcome to the Fab Lab 101 session. And today, these, these sessions are just going to be short, 15, 30 minutes. We're going to cover a piece of software, how to design for various technology using the Fab Lab. And like everything, there's a million ways to do everything. So this is just one way that we're going to go over with, over today. These will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. And I'll try to title them appropriately so that if we have like, we'll probably have multiple laser classes, but I'll try to title them in a way that, you know, talk about what we're covering. So there are a lot of different programs that are free and paid to design for the laser. And we're going to show you a couple today. A free, a free one that's web-based and paid. So now let's share screen. I hate when my chat disappears in this thing. Just leave my chat and participation windows up, stupid Zoom. <laughs> All right, so uh, this document is actually posted on our website and I'm going to post the videos in these documents as I create them or add to them um, on the website. So lakeshorefablab.com. Uh, just go to lakeshorefabla.com and it brings you to, you know, this crazy domain. But if you go to see what's happening under e-learning workshops, I just created a Fab Lab 101. You click that. This is episode, or this is episode one. Yeah, oh yeah, this is the document one from, the, from today's episode. So if you open it in a new window, it'll open up a Google document that you can download or print. And if you've never used the Google Doc, um, you should be able to, maybe I have it turned off. Anyways, I'll have to make it, make sure that people can download it as a PDF. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so then you go file and then download as PDF. Boom. If you want to download it, but you can just access it via the web anytime. So this is up there so for future reference. So our laser is an Epilog Helix 60 watt. It's a 24 inch by 18 inch, just to kind of give you a heads up for the bed. Um, I just put this stuff in there because a lot of people don't know what a laser, what it actually means. It's an acronym. I won't really cover the science of a laser, but I just threw them in there. Um, basically, electricity heats up gas, and you know, that releases light, essentially, to some mirrors that redirect it to what we want to burn. So, boom. Ours is a CO2 laser. Um, this is more relevant to using the laser, the focus. So when you get to use the FabLab laser, basically the focal length is from your top of your workpiece to the, the lens. And the standard one that we have is a two inch. And you can cut through, quarter inch is a little difficult, but you can do it if you go really slow. Um, eighth inch is prime. Even like seven, yeah, anything other than quarter is usually fine. Like I've cut 0.2 on it just fine. But eighth inch is like, awesome we also have a four inch lens available and a one and a half inch lens so the one and a half inch lens is good for really small fine like detail and like if you want to do really really fine print or something um the four inch lens supposedly it's really good at cutting through thicker material i haven't tried it for that though but it's also really good for if you have like a bowl and you have edges and you really you want to etch something inside of the bowl um you can't really do that with the two inch lens because the two, you know, parts of the laser will hit it. So four inch, you're really far away. Um, but two is pretty standard. It's mostly 99% what we've used. So you can cut material like wood, wood, plastics, um, stuff such as acrylic, fabric, paper. You can engrave a lot of items too. So you can't do bare metal and you can't do stuff like PVC because it releases chlorine gas, which can kill you. And that's not, that's no bueno. And let's see, so you can do uncoated metals with a special substance called Ceramark, which we have. So if you have like a stainless steel tumbler, you want to put someone's name on it or something, you just put this special stuff uh, called Ceramark on it. And it's just like a use, at the Fab Lab, it's just a use charge for, you know, every time you use it. Here are the settings for the different materials. You can click that, it takes you to Applogs um, PDF. We have also have that at the Fab Lab. And real quick, so when you're designing for a lot, a lot of stuff at the Fab Lab, including laser, you have two basic image types. You have a vector file and you have a raster file. So 
when you think of a, a raster file, think of like a JPEG, a GIF, a GIF, a PNG, like a normal photo. Like you download clip art from Google, it's going to be in a raster format file. And I'll show you, you know, that in a second. Vector file is what we want. So that's, that's what you want for really nice laser etching. Um, the, you, can ra you can etch rasters, but the problem is, is if you don't have a clear background sometimes, it can mess up your artwork. So if you had like, like we were doing, we did an award one time where we were etching words, a picture on this really nice wood and it didn't have a clear background, um, transparent background, and it etched the wood and it was very apparent. So that's one of the reasons why you want to uh, make sure you're converting stuff to vector format. Um, let's see, so vectors versus raster. So vector is the image on the right here. So it's the one that is kind of clear, right? So the benefit of a vector image is it's actually simulated by the computer to be a, a mathematical line, right? So if you take a normal image that you download from Google and you blow it up to be the size of a billboard, it's going to look all pixelated, kind of like this VS does. Um, whereas a, a vector image, you can blow it up to the size of a building and it never distorts. So the laser has a couple different modes. Cutting mode, it's like, you know, you're gonna cut out, like today we're gonna do a keychain, right? You gotta cut, you have a block of wood, well you gotta have a shape to cut out um, for that keychain. Otherwise you're just gonna have like a big piece of wood attached to your keys that are attached. So cutting mode, marking mode. Marking mode is kind of like cutting mode. Um, instead of, so each material has different settings that you have to use to go through the material to cut through like recommended power and speed settings for the laser. And if you, let's say it's 20, let's say it's 100% power, 20 speed to cut through eighth inch Baltic birch. Well, if you wanna do a marking mode, you don't wanna cut through, but you wanna um, go around like the profile of an object or something or a letter, then you basically would just like cut your speed, you like increase your speed. So instead of being at 20, which we know cuts through, I might put it at 50. Um, speed, so it's going really fast, so it's not going to cut through. Uh, there's different benefits to doing marking versus cutting, um, but most people, most time, you're going to be doing cutting in raster mode. It's rastering, think engraving. Um, it's kind of confusing because they call it raster mode, which is annoying. I just wish they'd call it engraving, but you also have the two different types of images, which are vector and raster. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. Um, but anyway, so if you think raster, just immediately get rid of that word in your head and think engraving, etching. Because um, you're going to etch or engrave, ideally, a vector image that, you, that was a raster that you might have converted to a vector. Again, it's confusing. <laughs> It'll make sense once, once I do it. So if you're looking for images on Google or anything, Bing, whatever, you, here's some tips. So make sure you know, it's simple. Um, transparent backgrounds, if possible, you can remove backgrounds, but you can't remove complex backgrounds. So, you know, like my example, how we show people is um, like kittens in a field, right? Kittens in a field, clip art. <laughs> All right, so like something like like this, right? That I'm not gonna be able to vectorize very easily because it has a lot of stuff going on. Now, if I just typed in um, my kitten clip art, a lot of these are pretty easy. I could convert this pretty easily. Um, yeah, so just gotta think simple. And there's some tips in here for in the, at the end about how to, um, so if you had like an image, like. You know, like today, it's going to, I'll show you a Star Wars image, but you had text with it too. Sometimes it's better to do text separately and add that in, in the design program that you're using, because a lot of times when it goes to trace it, it sees text and it sees a picture and it like doesn't know how to juggle both of them. So sometimes you have to do them separately or just add the text in separately. So like I said, power versus speed when you're designed for the laser. Now here are some websites for finding already made files. So you go to like thingiverse.com and type in laser cutting, you'll get a million things. Like I was on there earlier and I found like, I typed in laser cut birdhouse and there's like two dozen. 
And you could just download those files, bring them to the Fab Lab and make or modify them. Etsy, you can also buy files, which is pretty cool because they're usually pretty cheap, like three or $4, you know, maybe $10 for an advanced model. But you buy them and you own the file. So it's kind of cool. There's other sites like Etsy. I just, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. So vector software, paid Adobe or Corel Draw. I have Corel Draw on my laptop. Um, we have Corel Draw at the Fab Lab. It's what you'll ultimately send the file to the laser with. And it's ultimately what, like Adobe or Corel is what you're going to process the file in once you have it. So design it all, any of this free software, as long as you bring a vector file to the Fab Lab, you'll be good to go. It'll be able to import those. Adobe is costly. It's like 250 bucks a year and it's a subscription. It, it, a lot of people don't like it anymore. It's, it's really making people mad. Corel's great because if you want a premium product, you can usually find it for like 100 bucks for the student version, which isn't too bad. And it's the same version. Basically, they're just honor system that you're a student is what, I, what the dude told me. So if you're just learning and doing hobbyist stuff, you count as a student to me. If you're doing it in industry, then you might want to pay the $500 for the full program. So the other free ones today, or other free ones, Inkscape, this one's really popular amongst the hobbyist community. Um, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but there's a ton of stuff to it, or a ton of tutorials, and like a lot of people use it. Krita, this is one that I just keep seeing emerging um, as of late. It's do donation-based. I haven't used it, but it's on my radar. Now, I love ones that I don't have to install anything. I could just go to a website and do it. Apparently, they're, that's a thing. So the two I recommend so far in my experience are Gravit and Vector. These programs, um, Vector is a little simplistic. It doesn't seem like you can do as much, as much advanced stuff in it, whereas Gravit seems like it's more like Adobe Illustrator Lite. That's what I'm, I'm going to be using Gravit today. And there's some other ones here that I have not really played around with. So, you know, let's, let's think, all right, we want to make a keychain. Now, these, these images you'll see, screenshots and stuff, um, it, there's not a lot of them. There's a couple. It's done in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I didn't reinvent the wheel They're from another project we did. So a lot of the tools are the same. You just have to figure out where they are and whatever software you're figuring out how to use. So, you know, laser etch key chains, that's like a really easy starter project. And, you know, you know, if you're into like Baby Groot or Avengers, um, you know, you can show off to all your friends with uh, stuff that you like. So um, we're going to go, we're going to use Google or whatever. And we're going to find an image that we want to use. So let's go here. I like Star Wars. So let's save this. We'll use this image as our key chain, the Stormtrooper. It's black and white, so it's a nice image. You know, I don't see too much of an issue with a lot of these images that popped up, but in my search term, sometimes if I can't find the right image, I'll add the term black or white to it. Because the laser doesn't do color. The laser can do grayscales, but if you have a lot of color going on, it'll be very hard for you to differentiate detail. Um, so yeah, like stuff like this will, works pretty good. So, this guy. Oh, I think it was this one. So we'll save this image as. We'll just right click save. I'm just going to put it in the downloads file. I'm just going to call it Stormtrooper. So it saved it as a JPEG. Um, so that's an image file. We're going to go up to Gravit. So when you send it to Gravit, um, it gives you this so you can make a design for a template. The templates are kind of cool because there's like social media posts and ads and stuff. And then there's also like print on demand. So it'll put a t-shirt template there and you could design like your own t-shirt. Um, yeah, so you can play around that or you could just create a, uh, blank, a blank one. So we're just gonna say, we're gonna make our workspace eight by eight inches. As with any vector program, when you start, it's usually gonna ask you what units. A lot of times it'll default, default into points. Um, because vector programs, vector design programs, they don't care. Size doesn't matter. I could scale it up or down to be whatever size I need when I'm done. So if I don't care right away and I just need to get a design done, I could choose the points first. But I like to think of things, you know, in inches or centimeters or millimeters. 
So we'll do eight by eight inches. We'll create this sucker. So this is our, our blank page, eight by eight. All right, so I'm gonna go up to file, I'm gonna go place, import, place image. We're gonna find stormtrooper.jpg right there, boom. All right, so there we go. Now I think it's control. If I zoom in, notice how it gets all pixelated like that. So it's a dead giveaway that you have a raster image that's not vectorized. Um, so it's pretty easy in this program so to vectorize. There's, and I haven't figured out any if there's any like advanced controls for it or not, but let's bring it down, trim it down a little bit. Um, over on the right side here, you have some tools. So you have like um, a line and like X, Y position and size of your object, like length, width, and height. Um, again, I don't know all the tools in this program, just some of the basic ones. Yeah, so you could crop the image right right here. If you want to crop out some text or like a trademark symbol or something you don't want on the image, you could crop it out. So let's, with the image selected, we're going to go up to Modify. We're going to go to Path, and we're going to click on Vectorize Image. And it's going to think for a second, and it vectorized it. So if I zoom in, notice how that, border is super clean and crisp now well because it's a mathematical um line now i can actually so i it's all grouped up together right now but if i right click i think i can ungroup ungroup so let's say i wanted to clean it up a little bit so i ungrouped it now i have control over various objects right if i didn't want that that uh, mark there i could click on it and delete it, right? I could move his eyes or whatever. I could, I could modify the paths. Uh, so if I double click on like this, you can see how it turned into a bunch of like um, nodes. So I can actually change those nodes, right? If I wanted to make it bigger. So that's what's cool about vectors is like, you can, you can modify the image now. All right, so we're gonna sh we're gonna regroup this guy. Oh, and see all those those nodes right there. <laughs> it's kind of messy, so we're gonna group this together. So it's all one image. Well, if I click on it now, we see our height is seven by seven by seven point three. So let's make that more like a keychain size. Let's do three inch width. Oh, <laughs> gotta make it so it locked the ratio. We'll do three inch width, so it's not like a s enormous keychain. Come on. Uh, there we go. I was in. I was on this this uh, tool up here. It was like a hand or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So if I send if I download this and send it to the laser, it's just all the laser is going to do is etch it. The laser needs to have like a path to cut around it. And our laser, what you do uh, is you make them very basically what's called hairline, very thin lines, and the laser sees those as cutting. So there's two things we, two different ways we can make this into a keychain. So there's, where's the shapes up here? All right here. So up here there's like rectangles, ellipses. So let's draw an ellipse. We'll do this. All right. So I'm drawing my ellipse. Right now it disappeared because there's a fill to it. Um, we don't want to fill on the center of our, our cutout because let's see if I send this guy to the back, right click on it, go to send. Send it back. You can kind of see right now there's some funny business going on. So there, when I vectorized this image, it vectorized, it broke down every component I thought it was a different color. Uh, so you can see this box that's still there. If I set this to the laser like this, it's gonna etch that weird box. It's gonna etch these gray parts right here. Um, we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is ungroup this guy and I'm actually just gonna click on that box. Looks like there's a couple of them. And get rid of them. Oh. So there's one there, I'm not entirely sure. That'll be some, I didn't do this earlier, so <laughs> we're learn I'm learning. Um, let's see, create a compound shape. I'm gonna do a union. Let's see what that does. 
That didn't work. So <laughs> I have an idea. I'll show you what I'll show you what I'm gonna do. And so I delete that, and unfortunately, we lose some of that um, the white right there. So I'm gonna recreate that using a couple different shapes. So let's do. Actually, I'm gonna use the pen tool. I'll show you guys that. So I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm just gonna kind of manually draw. This isn't gonna be great, because I'm not gonna spend a lot of time doing this. It's gonna be blocky as heck, but you guys will get the idea. If I had a lot of time to follow the, the contours just right, it makes sense, there. So I have, now I have this on top of my, my black shape right there. What I'm gonna do is select it, and now I'm going to go to modify, and I'm gonna do a union. And it should do what I want it to do. It did not. <laughs> um, mask with shape. Dang. All right. Well, I'll do it in Chrome because I know I think when I export it, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, technical difficulties. All right. So now I have this oval. I want to change it so that it's um, the fill is not there anymore. So I'm going to go over here to the right side and I'm going to make it completely white because the laser will not etch pure white. There. Now, it's gone, because guess what? There wasn't a border. So I'm gonna click on it again, go down here to the border tab, and it adds a one point border. So we'll just leave it one point, because when I put it into Corel, I have to change it. Um, all right, so let's add an ellipse up here, because we, we need a cutout, right? Again, we want to get rid of the fill because it wants to put a fill in there for some reason. Then we're going to go down to border. We're going to add a border. So there we have a basic shape and our keychain. Now I could use the pen tool and I could actually follow the contour of this, this guy and I could draw, um, depending on what, what design I was going for, right? Like we could go, let's see, we could do freehand. I could go, all right, we're going to follow this, boom, right? And it's going to create lines. And I, if I went all the way around, I could create a solid shape and do more of a freeform shape. So there's a lot of ways to do it. All right. So in these programs like Adobe, Corel, um, Gravit, on the left side or the right side, usually you'll have uh, what's called layers. You'll have a tab here. So that's helpful for if you look down here and see all these layers. So they're all right now on one layer. So let's say I wanted to, I wanna move like all these objects right here that I just selected make up the stormtrooper. So if I right click it, it'll let me put those into a new layer. No, new layer right there. So I'm gonna drag those guys in there. I'm gonna, there we go. Boom. So I have a layer for, oh, that created a path. So let's do another layer and I'm gonna put the cutout geometry in that layer. I found it very nice and helpful when you're doing this stuff on different layers. Delete. So, whoops, I'm gonna put this layer forward. So the reason it disappeared was because the order of the layers matters. So it put this layer on top of this layer, which I want it the other way around. Uh, what's nice about this is let's say I design my keychain, the cutout part, I can actually lock it right here so that I actually can't accidentally select it or delete it. So it's nice when you're doing complicated projects and you do like one part or the next, you can lock them and then you can't actually delete them. You keep accidentally creating paths. So my keychain's ready now, so we're going to make it exportable down here. And in this program, you have to like create a slice, it's called. And I'm gonna drop it down so that it's just over the size of my object. All 
right, where is, hit enter. All right, so now I should be able to add export. Down here, it's wanting me to know what size I want to do it at, what suffix, like if I have different versions, we'll call it rev1, and then I save it as a file type. So we're going to do SVG, which is, SVG is scalable vector graphic. Export. So there we go. Slice rev1.svg. So let's go over to Corel. So let's say in Corel, I want to create, oh, this is for my garden. <laughs> I hope to laser I've at some point. <laughs> So let's say I click this little plus and it creates a blank document. Right now the bed size in Corel is the size of our defaulted um, our plywood that we get, 24 by 16. So our laser is actually a little bit bigger, 24 by 18. So you could have their bed size be whatever. And I realize I'm talking a lot and this is taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to. <laughs> so I'll be quick. So I went file import. So there's my file. Now I have to do a little, couple more things probably in, in Corel to make sure that it's um, exportable really easily. As you can see, the background is really big. Like it looks like it's got like a, the image is huge. Uh, what did I do to get rid of that before? I think I have to convert outline to object. But you can see as I drag it around, um, the it covers up right here. So <laughs> anyways, yeah, I have a vector image. I can grow it to be whatever size I want. You know, if I want to make a huge <laughs> file on the laser, boom. <laughs> So I don't have the driver for the laser on my computer. I'd show you that, but I did save an image in here. So like this guy right here, and this might be hard to see. Let's try to zoom in a little bit. So when you go to print it to the laser, this is the screen that you should see come up. So I kind of highlighted the boxes you look for. Depending on the resolution you're looking for, you have to make a selection that depends on what you're, what you're actually etching. Um, it depends on the material you're using. Autofocus, if our manual focus, uh, or sorry, our autofocus if it's working, but you can always manual focus. Uh, for this object, we would do a combined job type. So it's a raster. Remember, th when it says raster, think engrave or etch. I wish it would just change that, but. They define rastering as etching. Vector, think cutting. I want to cut something out. And then combined is what we're doing. So we're, we're going to etch our graphic first, and then we're going to cut it out. Now, the other thing that's important, too, with our laser is this piece size. So if we designed in, let's say, that 24-inch by 18-inch Corel document down here, and I go here, my piece size right here, 24 by 18, now, I have to make sure that that matches in this driver or things go all crazy and it will mess up your artwork and your, your wood. So that's something you just learn by doing. And then we have our raster settings and our vector settings. And for those, you go to the chart that is included in that presentation. Yeah, the link that's on here. And let's see, things to remember. I put some extra tips on here. So there's a lot of font generator websites. So if you want, let's like let's say Avengers font, uh, but you can't really find it, just Google Avengers font generator, and usually you find something. So then I would basically create my font like this Fab Lab Avengers here, and I'd save that image, and then I would import that image just like I did the Stormtrooper. Doesn't always work though. And then just a ton ton of uh, resources here, some project examples, some tutorials. 
all kinds of cool stuff. Applog has a resource for sample projects. So any of these you can download and modify or make. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> a little longer than what I think was long thinking, but I mean, there, there comes to be a lot to this stuff. And you, <laughs> um, <laughs> so to specify the which line you're going to cut or etch. So let me show. I'll just show you this whole process real quick in Corel. This is why I like I like Corel because ultimately you're going to use Corel to fine tune before you send to the laser because in the that other program it's not going to tell it's not it might not necessarily be the light, the right line width when it imports so let's go file import this is in corel draw mind you which the fab lab computers have and if you end up getting like a student edition like i said it's like 100 bucks so stormtrooper import this guy and i always like corel better to show people anyways because if I hold this over the edge here, of this kind of the document border, you can see that you can't see the line through it. So that tells me right away, one, it's not a transparent image. It could be a vector image, I'm not 100% sure yet because I didn't zoom in far enough, but I know it's not transparent. So if I sent this to the laser right now, I might get a box of, like if this, is, if this zone is not pure white, I'll get a box around this image on wood and it will just look like crap. Now, all right, so now I zoom in. Guess what? Pixelated, it's a raster image. So what we're gonna do is convert it natively inside Corel. So there's an option under bitmap, under outline trace, and there's a, all these basically take you to the same place. Most of the time I just choose detail logo. And then it shows you a side-by-side -side comparison. This is why I like Corel, because you have a lot more um, control of this and you can kind of see how the the checker pattern here means that as a transparent background whereas this is white here so this is before and after now I have control over this and I can move this dial to kind of give me detail sometimes you have to play with these different settings here it'll mess things up sometimes and I can also click remove color from entire image that kind of broke it so the image isn't that great it's because there's a lot going on so for like this image what I would probably do is just leave it and if it etched the inside of the stormtrooper it's fine because I'm not going to notice it's not going to completely mess up what I'm doing and then click OK so this is a vector as you can see if I put it over the line here it's, the, it's it didn't get rid of that center part which is fine I'm curious if I group it together, if it will. Yeah, there's, there's ways to, to make it completely transparent, but it's too much to go into right now. So now in Corel, I can do the same stuff. I can draw a circle. So right now, if, I, if I'm holding on the circle, you can see up here, it says half point. Well, I want to change that to hairline. So if I zoom in and do it, so this right here, eight point, that would etch. So if I send this to the laser and I say, you're gonna do a combined vector and um, raster engrave, it's gonna be like, ha, you have no vectors. I'm not doing anything. I'm not cutting anything. So it would engrave that. Hairline right here is what you want it to be on to cut. And then I would do the same thing for my cutout circle. So again, draw. A circle, I'm going to change this to hairline, and then you see how it, you may or may not see how it got thin. Yeah. And then I would basically just, you know, if I had a full sheet, I was going to cut this out on the laser. I could reposition this in the top left area, and then I could send this to the laser to cut one out, or there's ways to array it. Or I, if you're just gonna do like a couple copy and paste, you could just do something like that and just put it next to it. Yep, yep. Yeah, so you can, do, you can just do the designs on those free programs um, and get a vector file, but ultimately 
you will have to you will have to double check things inside Corel once we import it because those other programs what they define a hairline or as the minimum line thickness might be different than what Corel and the laser sees. And ultimately, you will just always have to do a test on the laser. It's it, you just every time you're going to do something, it's not going to work out the first time. Now, if I accidentally selected all these, you notice how up here it doesn't give me a line font because I'm selecting multiple types of lines. If I accidentally did that and I clicked hairline and I didn't realize it, and then I was like sending this to the laser, well, it's going to cut out literally every shape now because every shape around here has a hairline line thickness. You can't see it, but it's there. <laughs> We've done that many, many times. So that is basic laser design 101. Double the time I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I did talk a lot in the beginning that wasn't like about laser design that was so. <laughs> There's trial and error. So the settings depend on um, the wear of the laser. So, you know, things like how good the CO2 tube is, um, how good the lens is, so, and, or if the mirrors are out of alignment. So if you, you always do, like if I was gonna test the laser with this material, let's say I had eighth inch Baltic birch, and I'm like, well, I wanna know what the laser settings are. So I might just draw a stupid little, box, make it hairline, and I might put a box on the inside that's not hairline, make it black, fill it black, and I might send, you know, I might get a piece of scrap that I know I'm not going to use and send this little bit to the laser and see if the setting is going to work. And if, if it doesn't cut through, then I know I have to um, go slower. Yeah. And most of the people that use the laser at the fab a lot, when you guys get a chance to come in, they know, so you can always ask someone, so, hey, what's it cutting at? Cutting Baltic birch at, you know, and they'll tell you, like, oh, 20 speed, 100 power. Etching usually isn't a problem. Um, the only time etching becomes a real big issue is when you're using, like, crazy materials or you're trying to do a photo, which is a whole can of worms. So, yeah. If you got a hundred bucks, I'd recommend getting Corel Draw. Design some stuff, play with some of the other vector programs, get a feel for designing vectors, and when you start doing a lot of work, Corel Draw is pretty great. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, this document is on the website. So you can view it and click any of the links. And I think that'll do it. Thank you for tuning in to episode one. <laughs> uh, I forget what next week is, but if you go to the Lakeshore Fab Lab website, it should be on there. So if I go here, check on our calendar. If I click the event, I think I have it on there. Designing for the Roland vinyl printer and cutter, or the crickets, same thing. So, you want to learn how to make stickers and banners and t-shirt stuff? We'll do that next week. Honestly, very similar. So, the common theme is vectors. If you know how to do vector stuff, you can design for anything you want. See y'all next week. <laughs>